Can I have your name, please, and how did you get involved with uh, animal rights movement? My name is Shannon Keith, and I got involved. Um, basically, I learned how animals are being treated in factory farms, and I became a vegetarian in college and decided that I wanted to help animals and help move them out of the category of chattel into actual sentient beings within the law. So I decided to become an animal rights attorney and went to law school, became vegan, and started practicing animal rights law. How long have you been doing uh, law practice? I've been practicing animal rights law for 12 years. And uh, what are some cases you want? Can you tell us about it? Uh, I've done every kind of case you can think of, from civil to criminal to administrative law. Um, I've succeeded in a lot of activist trials where I've defended animal rights activists for their freedom of speech um, and definitely succeeded in um, some cases uh, against Shaq, some civil cases against that Huntington Animal Cruelty. Um, and they're very specific. Should I get into like the specifics? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I did win a couple of um, free speech issues when it came to being able to protest uh, in front of abusers' homes and vivisectors' homes. Um, I have succeeded in cases where uh, we were able to get emotional distress damages for the loss of an animal, whereas you know before that they're just considered property in the law. I have been able to get um, have the law recognize that animals are actually living, breathing, sentient creatures that deserve a voice in the law, and the people who have them deserve uh, damages for their injuries or for their loss. So I've succeeded in a lot of getting there, getting there, and, and getting animals outside of that category of chattel. You also make documentary film. Can you tell us about um, your two projects? Yeah, I'm also a documentary filmmaker, and my first documentary film was called Behind the Mask. And Behind the Mask focused on those people who break the law to save animals, um, more specifically the ALF, the Animal Liberation Front, and also sort of a subcategory, which is the government um, infiltration and harassment of activists, including myself. And Behind the Mask um, is, is still a very relevant film. It came out in 2006 and uh, won awards worldwide in mainstream festivals. Uh, my second film that I completed a year ago is called Skin Trade, and it's a, an expose on the fur industry, and already has gained um, notoriety all over, won many awards, um, and uh, has changed a lot of fashion designers' outlook on what they're going to feature, meaning not fur. And, uh, and now I'm working on my third film called Sanctuary, about primates in captivity. Um, regarding Behind the Mask, you, you were traveling, interviewing all the activists and stuff, and all like it, people who went to prison for like long time. What, what made? I mean, what would they do? Like you know, to be in that. What? Why would they put the risk of going to prison for a long time to break the law for animals? The people that I interviewed who are featured in Behind the Mask, um, they said that you know it was worth going to prison. It was worth being arrested. It was worth risking their freedom and their life to save animals um, because they believe that a life is a life and that these animals that are being tortured and imprisoned don't have a voice. They don't have anybody that's fighting for them, willing to save, or I'm sorry, willing to risk their lives for them. And these people were willing to be those people, which is amazing brave. Mm -hmm. um, any suggestions for like uh, activists who wants to become like lawyers in the future? Like activist lawyers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love for activists to become attorneys. I consider myself an activist attorney and we don't have enough of us. Uh, there's very few activist attorneys out there. Um, if you're an activist, you're naturally an attorney anyway because you know the facts. You're always educated. You know how to argue and you know how to fight for what you believe in. And it's very easy if you have your mind set on a certain goal. If you want to do animal rights, human rights, whatever your passion is, when you have that in mind and you know that's what you want to do and it's the right thing to do, you'll achieve that. Go to law school. It's easy. It's easy when you have a, a great social cause in mind. Does it really help by putting animal abusers in jail to the prison industrial complex because it's overpopulated and stuff? Yeah, um, you know, I have a real issue with um, putting anyone in prison, especially animal abusers, because what happens is they go to prison and they just become more violent. Um, mm -hmm. Besides all the other issues when it comes to the prison system, uh, what we need to do is rehabilitate people. Mm -hmm. And obviously people that are abusing animals are sick and they need, they need help. 
um, I, I was involved in a case where um, I knew somebody who was representing uh, an animal abuser, actually. And um, I, I practically begged this attorney um, to have this person be rehabilitated rather than go to prison. Well, the person ended up going to prison for three years. He got out and he started doing the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see happen time and time again. We need to get rid of that prison system and instead have a rehabilitation system that's actually going to work. Why does the society uh, only see animal rights activists, only care about animals and nothing else? I think society is intimidated by animal rights activists because most people don't understand it. You know, people are very self-centered and they understand causes that have to do with themselves, very human-centric causes. And, you know, this is the only social cause that is outside of ourselves where we're fighting for mm -hmm. a, a different species. And I think that people don't understand it. So when they see us fighting for animals, they can't understand it. So the first thing is to attack it, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that um, were they to actually see the footage that we see and see the cruelty that we see that made us do what we do and makes us do what we do, I think they'd understand. Uh, what are the changes you, you see now from the animal rights movement in the old days when you first got into it? Like, mm. positive, negative? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of positive and negative change that I've seen since I first started. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start with the bad stuff. Unfortunately, um, you know, since I started, we've had, um, you know, some horrible laws that have been passed, um, such as the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act. And unfortunately, I've seen that have a little bit of um, a chilling effect on activists. There are definitely less people that come out to demos. Like today, there are very few people at World Week for Animals and Labs. Um, back when I was organizing these years ago, we'd have at least a couple hundred people out here today. Um, and I'm not sure why that is, other than people are maybe afraid of being arrested and going to prison. Um, uh, but we, a, a positive aspect is we do have many more effective activists, people who are more educated. And we have a lot more animal rights attorneys and um, educated activists making great choices in terms of getting the message out there, as well as more filmmakers um, getting the message out there we have more professionals, um, great PR firms that are representing activists. So we're becoming um, a, a more responsible, a more educated, and more effective movement. Oh, last thing, don't you also do like fundraiser, like bake sales for different causes? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit more information? Yeah, I, I also have a nonprofit. It's called ARMY, Animal Rescue Media and Education. And we rescue animals hands on, like this little guy here from the South Central Pound. He was dumped there and was going to be killed. Uh, and we also have the Beagle Freedom Project, where we rescue animals from labs. And that was Freedom, who's here today. Um, and so we have fundraisers all the time for the events that we do. Um, and we do anything from a little vegan bake sale to raise money to larger events that we just had one at the House of Blues. Uh, and you can always find out our upcoming events at ARME, ARME.TV. Alright, thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks for doing what you do.